Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Fluffy Flamingos. We have a special guest with us, Chandler Jones. Hello. And you guys probably recognize him from previously on the channel. It's been a minute. Today, we're doing an episode of Silent Minds. Silent Minds is a short mini series that we're doing 10 episodes long. And it's all about teaching you guys impromptu magic. Impromptu meaning anytime, anywhere, with anything. Maybe a deck of cards, coins, or even nothing at all. So today, as you saw, we're gonna be doing a card trick and this is gonna be a lot like our Phoenix vlog, our little Phoenix mind reading episode where we're gonna be teaching Chandler a trick, which he was he was not privy to. <laughs> yeah, you just learned, we're gonna, I'm gonna try and teach you something on the fly. Okay. And I'm expecting it to go well, uh, just because it's such an easy trick. It requires little to no skill, um, but it's really a big wow factor. So we're gonna see if we can get this right. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be using stud playing cards because uh, this trick requires a little rough handling. So I don't wanna f up any cards that are nice. <laughs> okay, so if you would like, you can shuffle those cards. It doesn't matter to me, but if you would like, you can. And remember guys, always let the spectator shuffle if they can. Okay, Chandler, this is the perfect moment to ask you, what is your previous experience in magic? None. <laughs> okay, perfect timing. Reason I bring that up is because I want you to know he has no experience, uh, aside from shuffling, he knows how to shuffle, unlike what he just did. <laughs> but he can shuffle and that's about it. Do you know any sleight of hand? No. No, okay. The point is, anyone can do this pretty quickly. You wanna cut it or anything? Satisfied? Yeah. Cool. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So here's the deal. Got all these cards. I'm just gonna dribble through like oh. that. I mean, he's <laughs> he's done these before, so we're gonna get a little ahead of ourselves. But I'm gonna dribble. You say stop whenever you would like, and when you say stop, this will be the card that you land on. So just let me know when you're ready. Stop. Okay. Going to take a look. Don't let me see. It's super important. Show the camera. You got it. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna put it back in the middle. Cool. I'm gonna make sure I, I really don't know where this is. Okay, if I did this right, it's on top. Okay. Do you believe me? No, but yes. <laughs> Queen of clubs? No. Damn, okay. What? A, okay, maybe I got lucky. Bottom? No. Nope. So I, <laughs> okay. Damn, I always fuck these things up, the three <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. Eat <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Basically, Chandler had no reason feeling ashamed earlier. <laughs> because we're just gonna do it all over again. <laughs> okay, so that's the performance and I've gotta let you know, I didn't even do it completely right. But it still is bulletproof enough that like, even if you mess up, like, it's redeemable easily. The way that this trick works is extremely easy. And I'm gonna give you your own deck of cards here. I'll use these. So like I said, for impromptu stuff, anyone can do anything. So because the cards don't need any specific order, therefore being impromptu, you can let the spectator shuffle, which is always a good plus. Make it seem as out of your hands as possible. So you let the spectator shuffle, they wanna cut, whatever, that's fine. At this point, you can dribble. If you don't know how to dribble, that's okay. We'll go over that uh, in a future video. But if you don't know how to dribble for now, it's okay to just like spread the cards out small and let them pick a card, okay? Dribbling is recommended because of the slight that you have to do, uh, allows you to do this a lot easier. So in the performance, we dribbled, you said stop, and here's all I did. He took the card and I put the rest of the deck on top and only took the top card off. So when he put the card back in the deck, it's now second in position. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So an important aspect to this is misdirection, right? And people think that misdirection is so exaggerated, like look at that dove I just made yeah. up here. It's so easy to make misdirection. Simply just have them memorize the card and that's all the time you need. So you say, stop. While they look at the card, you just get ready put the card on top and you slap it on top, make it pretty dramatic, make it look like you're putting it in the middle 
And uh, now you can have no breaks or anything and make it look like you really lost it into the deck. And I'm sure that's how it looked, yeah. right? Okay. This is another aspect to the performance is the vulnerability piece. So you say, I think I got it to the top. Clearly, no, right? This yeah. is just a way to make sure that it is on top now, right? Yeah. So they think it's in the middle somewhere when it's really in second. We show them the top card and we fucked up big time. We put that in the middle and you say, okay, let me give me another chance. And they want to see you succeed. No spectator wants to watch a magician blow, you know? Yeah. So they're like, okay, yeah, one more time. And I say, what about, maybe I just cut it wrong and it's on the bottom. No, right? And that's just to add to the effect of the vulnerability. So you put that in the middle. So now where we're left is that their card is on top. So what happened to the performance is I messed up this part. So what's supposed to happen is you throw the cards down and their card should be the only thing that lands face up. Okay. I just threw mine at an angle and it just blew up. <laughs> but that's it. So as it's long as, <laughs> right. So as long as you're keeping an eye on the top card, even if the cards go everywhere, you can just pick it up and just like pull it out of the deck and like, okay, I think it was this one. It's still impressive enough. Yeah. You saw his reaction. I didn't even do it right. So let's go down to the mat. I'm going to bring the camera closer and I'm going to show you guys how to make that card flip upside down properly. <laughs> okay, guys. So now we're at, down at the mat. I got the Ace of Hearts as my cards. You got the Seven of Spades. So this is going to be pretty simple. So like I said, this is a very beginner trick. There's no real skill to this. Just don't throw it at an angle like I did. That's about it. So for this trick, all you're gonna do is with your thumb, move the card over. So you see it's hanging off the side now. And you're gonna grab the cards kind of like a death grip over them. By the way. Right? Yeah. Look good? So Chandler, you already nailed it. It's, it's that easy. Basically, all you're doing is palming a card off to the side and that's it, right? So uh, easy beginner ways, just move it over and then grab the cards and you're already there. You'll notice your pinky will do some of the work of the beveling and like buckling the card, um, but that's it. You move your card over, grab the cards and I'm just gonna drop it. Ah, oh, damn, that should have worked. So the momentum of you dropping the cards should drop the cards, but give this enough air time to flip. So you should do it high enough up. So we'll try a little bit higher, like. <laughs> I think you have to toss it a little, so. And you can just grab it off the table and say, this is it. You spot it right away. I'm trying to look professional here, right? It might be the surface. I think it is. <laughs> just how <laughs> bouncy. <Okay. laughs> There's something hard. All right. Hope you guys like the yellow background. <laughs> it's your yellow today. Okay, I'm gonna try it before I say anything. There it is. It is the f***ing cushion. <laughs> okay, guys, I promise you I'm a professional. This, <laughs> I just didn't think, I didn't factor in the cushion of our table here. Again, you just double the card out, <laughs> grab it, and just toss it onto the table. It looks like that. That's how the performance should have gone. <laughs> Look how cool that looks. That looks mystical. Chandler, give that a try. It's the easiest thing ever. <laughs> Close, you gotta toss it a little. Give it a little oomph. There you go, at least it's the only one that flew away. Sometimes it's hit or miss. You know, it's a lot of practice to just kind of get that airtime right. But that's, that's really all there is too, is just tossing the card down. There you go, pretty easy think this deck is so you just got to get enough height enough air time for the cards to there you go that's it so if you find the right height maybe about a foot up if you go up a foot that should be enough air time for the deck to fall and their selection to fall on right on top of it so if you go too high it might just go down like this and might flip not on top of the deck so the whole point is that it's a production. It's supposed to look mystical, like it just appeared on top of the deck. Just like like he did it. He did it better, but. <laughs> I feel like, am I qualified to teach this? Jesus. <laughs> Everything went wrong that possibly could have. Okay, so just to recap the trick really quick. Uh, I'll show you guys the application with just spreading the cards. So, uh, 
they would take the card and I say, okay, I'm gonna take a look. And then I just do the same thing as before. I just palm off the card. They put their card on top, slap it in. I say, okay, let's uh, lose the deck, the card into the deck. So here's a little trick that will also be important. So when you're putting it back on the deck, you say, can you put it back on the deck for me? Make sure that it's facing their eyes so that the depth isn't really there. It doesn't look like it's not half the deck. And when you slap it, it looks like you put it together. So that's a nice little additive to work on. Then you do your little vulnerability thing. You say, it's not the Nine of Diamonds. Oh, maybe, it was, no, it's not the bottom card. There you go. <laughs> so the two applications that I use for this, the first production, you can say like, okay, I can't find it with the sleight of hand way, so I'll try the mystical way. And just like <laughs> that, you find their card. I swear, like, it doesn't even matter if you mess up. It just looks cool. The second application for the production is like out of frustration. So you kind of yelling like, oh, I can never find their card. And there it is. It's a lot to play around with. And again, like it's not a whole lot of skill required. It's just finding the right height. There you go. With just like a little bit of practice, you just start to nail it after a bit. You know, I just had a cool idea for this. They have two jokers that look like a compass. And then they have an extra joker that looks like a broken compass. So you could force them to take the joker and then hide it in and then do the trick and be like, oh, shit, I broke it. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Just found me a new, new gag. Okay, we're gonna leave you off with one last small performance. Okay, so here's the trick. I'm gonna do a final trick, a little performance teaser thing for you. There's a million different cards in here and they're all shuffled, so what I'm gonna have you do is you can just tell me when to stop whenever. Yeah. Okay? Stop. Okay, do you want the two of spades or the three of diamonds? Two of spades. Two of spades? Yeah. Okay. When I first started doing magic, I was so good at figuring out what your card was and then and changing the color of the back of that card. Yeah. I'm now a lot better than I used to be. <laughs> And so what I'm doing now is changing the color of every single card, except for your card. So you'll notice, oh, yeah, there it is, our single red card. And uh, you said it was the two of spades. You can see every single card has changed, uh, but I keep saying every single card, so that means probably the two of spades as well. <laughs> how you do those. <laughs> <laughs> what the f <laughs> So that is it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure having you back, yeah. of course. And I mean, I think you nailed the trick. Do you think <laughs> it was pretty easy? Yeah. Do you think you could do it, like replicate it for your wife or something? Maybe. Okay, if we do, maybe we'll do a little short. But uh, if you guys have any questions, comment below. Um, go on ahead, check out our other content for Video Child on YouTube and on Spotify. And then also my other podcast, Twisted Manor, also on Spotify. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you get more content like this right at your door. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Fluffy Flamingos. Yeah.